Hi everyone, I'm Shannon and welcome to today's video. So today I am back with another best and worst cruise staterooms and today I'm finishing up the series of the Oasis class with The Wonder of the Seas. Now The Wonder of the Seas, as I'm recording this in January of 2022, hasn't even debuted yet. It's not debuting for another two months. However, because it is a sister ship of the uh, in the Oasis class, we kind of, I have an idea of what the best and worst staterooms are going to be. So a little bit about The Wonder of the Seas. Again, it is debuting in 2022, so it's zero years old. There are 2,865 staterooms, 17 total decks, with 11 of them having um, staterooms. Now, if you haven't seen any of my prior videos, I use the website cruisestateroom.com. I've been using the site for over 10 years, and they pretty much have deck plans for every single single cruise ship imaginable, not just Royal Caribbean, but every line. And you're able to go through deck by deck and look at all the different layouts. And a lot of times people will have submitted photos and there'll also be links to videos of different staterooms to give you an idea of what those staterooms might look like. Now, obviously with the Wonder of the Seas having, having um, debuted yet, there's not going to be any pictures. However, I do encourage you to maybe, if you're looking at a specific stateroom, look and see if there is a picture on the Harmony, the Symphony, the Allure, any of those, because it might be similar. Depending, there might be, there are some minor differences within the um, different ships, so, but more likely than not, it will be very, very similar. So obviously no pictures at this point, but as, as the ship debuts, I'm sure pictures will be submitted. Now again, I do use the website cruisestateroom.com and what I am looking for are those unique staterooms. Those, you know, corner staterooms that may give you a little bit of extra space or those interior or family staterooms that um, are family or ultra spacious that sleep six but also have bunk beds. Um, we're only a family of three but being able to have a, a dedicated bed for my son is awesome. Also, will give you a little bit of extra space. So those are the, some of the unique staterooms that I'm looking for. Maybe one of those balcony staterooms that has a little bit of extra, you know, balcony space. That's what I'm trying to focus on. However, not every category is going to have that. So what I do is I go category by category. I start with the highest all the way down to interior. I will look at every single deck. And then at the end, I after at the end of each category, I will say, if I were to book this stateroom, or if I was to book this category, I would try and get in this area, or I would try to get this stateroom. So that's what I'm looking at. Sometimes there's only a few, you know, unique staterooms on different ships, but I also try to give kind of my personal input. There's a lot of videos out there as far as things to avoid when booking, maybe below pull deck, maybe you don't want to be too forward or too far back. Those are a lot of things that you can kind of generalizations, a lot of videos on that, encourage you to watch that. But what I am doing is focusing on the specific ship in this video. Now, if you are interested in Royal Caribbean, I definitely encourage you to check out Royal Caribbean blog. There's a YouTube channel, obviously a blog and a podcast, but the YouTube channel has a lot of great videos, information, and it's all Royal Caribbean specific. And then Matt also does a live Q&A every Monday night at 7.30. So he tries to answer as many questions as he can. So knowledgeable of all things Royal Caribbean. Cannot recommend his channel enough. With that, I would also say, make sure you book with a travel agent. Um, I personally, Use touring plans to travel. Uh, Royal Caribbean blog recommends um, MEI Travel, La Lido Loca, that channel, which is also great for cruise news. They are uh, travel agents, and there's also a great Royal Caribbean's Moms at Sea group on Facebook, and it's run by Jamie, who is also a travel agent. So I'm going to post links to everybody below. Feel free to you know use any of them or use any other travel agent. There's a lot of great travel agents out there. I would try to get one that is Royal Caribbean specific or does specialize in Royal Caribbean. But the reason why I say that is you're not gonna save any money by booking directly through Royal Caribbean. You may get an onboard credit, some perks if you book through a travel agent. Royal Caribbean is the one that pays the travel agent. You don't pay them. However, if there's any problems, the travel agent's gonna handle it for you. Your cruise is canceled. Um, 
you need to do anything you need to contact rope they're going to do it for you so if there's long wait times they're going to call for you and they're going to be the ones that are going to be on hold it's going to be so much more convenient um i found it really great especially in this crazy time where policies are changing you know uh testing is changing my travel agent calls me makes sure and says hey just so you know the testing changed you now need a pcr instead of an antigen so stuff like that really really great information it really really helps and make sure you're on top of it and make sure you're informed so again highly recommend booking with a travel agent now let's take a look at all the different categories that are on the wonder of the seas first up is the ultimate family suite there's only one of them 1134 square feet it's on deck 18. the royal loft suite there's one of them it is 1524 square feet on deck 18. the aqua theater suite two bedroom there's six of them 739 square feet decks 8 9 and 10. and then the aqua theater suite one bedroom there's also six of them on decks 11 11, 12, and 14. The Crown Loft Suites, there's eight of them, 545 square feet on deck 18. The Owner Suite, 10 of them, 556 square feet, they are on also on deck 18. The Grand Suite, one bedroom, 28 of them, 371 square feet on deck 17. The Junior Suites, 115 of them, 287 square feet and they are on decks 6 through 14. Then there are the family balcony. Now this is one of those special staterooms that I mentioned. Sleeps up to six, has the bunk beds. There's only five of them, 271 square feet. They are on deck 11. The spacious balconies, 1,430, 182 square feet, and they are on deck six through 14. Then there are the boardwalk and central park balconies, 477 of them. They are 182 square feet, decks eight through 14. The ultra spacious ocean view, again, special cabin, sleeps up to six and has the bunk beds. There's eight of them, 271 square feet, deck 11. The boardwalk and central park view, 78 of them. Now this is no balcony, just the view. It is 199 square feet and it's on deck nine. So if you see if the one, the boardwalk and central park with um, view with the balcony is 182 square feet while this one's 199 so 17 uh, square feet more however you don't have a balcony so maybe if you want a little extra space maybe book this, this category then there is the ocean view stateroom 147 of them with uh, at 179 square feet decks 3 7 8 9 10 and 11 the family interior again special stateroom sleeps up to six has the bug beds there's only four of them 260 square feet and it is on deck 11 the promenade view interior 26 of them 194 square feet and they are on deck seven and then the interior staterooms there's 523 they are 172 square feet and they're pretty much on every deck they are on decks three and then six through 14. So with that, let's go ahead and head over to cruisestateroom.com and look at all the different decks and the best and worst staterooms on The Wonder of the Seas. And now we come to cruisestateroom.com and we're gonna go all the way down to Wonders of the Seas to click on it and it's going to bring up the deck plan for us. And we're gonna look at, first we're gonna look at the Ultimate Family Suite and the Ultimate Family Suite is going to be on deck 18 and you'll see the one thing I noticed with the Wonders of the Seas is that a lot of the locations have changed. They really took some things, I think, into account for the ship and made some changes. And the first is going to be the locations of the suites. So the ultimate family suite is right here on deck 18. It is two, two levels and you'll see right here and you can just look on these. Um, there are four YouTube videos already. The ship just started in March. So there's four YouTube videos already. Obviously, if you are got this suite, you're not watching this video. And the next up you'll see is the Royal Loft Suite. Also, this one sleeps up to six. This is also on deck 18, just across the way. And you'll see right here, again, there is at least three YouTube videos already here, um, as well as some pictures. An amazing suite if you're lucky enough to book this. Again, you are probably not watching this video. 
Um, and then you're gonna see right here. So here, let's let's go to the loft suites. Let's just go to the, the next one. So the crown loft suites, this is category L1. Now on the other prior Oasis class ships, there was quite a few of them. They kind of circled around the entire deck 17 and they were two floors. Not as much here. There's only eight of them. And what I have noticed is that a lot of people have been winning the crown loft suites in royal up bids so i think they weren't as popular so there are eight of them and one of the things i noticed is that there's no suites on this side anymore this side was you know not a direct ocean view you're paying thousands and thousands of dollars but you didn't have a direct ocean view and i'm sure these were the last to, to um book up so now with the crown loft suites there's only four on either side and again, I think for these, the ones that are gonna be the best are gonna be the ones with the bigger balcony, um, 1828, 1858, and then go down. But again, if you are in 1852, I don't think it's a bad stateroom. I mean, look at that balcony. It's absolutely stunning. Um, obviously, these are pictures provided by Royal Caribbean, so they're going to be in the best light. But again, the balcony is not gonna be small. You're just going to get probably a slightly bigger balcony maybe on 1858 and 1828. They're gonna be amazing. And then let's just like look at these owner suites right here. So these owner suites, it looks like there are there's 10 of them. Yeah, so there's 10 owner suites and they're all on deck 18. And um, there's some beautiful pictures here. There's actually a couple of videos. I did watch one of them that was very, very good. Um, really stunning, stunning stateroom. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. And this is the first time the owner suite has been up on the higher decks. In the past on the Oasis class, they've been on the lower decks. So I'm happy to see that they are on these upper decks. And you'll see here what they have added is this sweet sun deck. So the sweet sun deck they did have somewhere else. However, it was on a lower deck and then these were staterooms. So this is now a sweet sun deck. You looks like you have a bar right here and um, they look like they have some beautiful accommodations look you can have um you can basically sun and i love that this is right outside i mean if you are paying the money to stay in one of these suites you never even have to leave deck 18 you can just basically come out here go back to your room i think it's amazing i mean look at that a uh, little bed right here so i think this is a really good change for the wonders of the seas i think this was really taking into account what people liked, what people didn't like. So I think this is a really good change for the wonders of the seas. Next up, we're gonna talk about the Grand Suite one bedrooms, and these are all the staterooms on deck 17. Again, now deck 17 used to be where all the crown loft suites are, so on the Oasis class um, ships. So this is definitely a big change for the wonders of the seas. So as you can see, I think, let's see, there are um, 28 staterooms and these sleep up to three and they're 371 square feet, a balcony of 105 square feet. Now, obviously some are going to be bigger. I would look and see, you know, the ones that look like they're going to have a bigger balcony in the middle, 1768, 1718, 16, those are going to probably be the better ones. However, even these that might have a smaller balcony might not be you know, a bad thing. Um, now look at 1700. This is probably not gonna be a bad, it's gonna be probably a different, um, let's see, a different type of balcony. Let's see if we have a view of the balcony here. This is definitely a um, beautiful stateroom right here. Just absolutely stunning. And this one is going to have a balcony facing forward, which is gonna be a little bit different than the rest of the ship, um, especially the rest of the Grand Suites. So I don't think you're gonna have um, an, a bad view on any of these. I think the accommodations are gonna be incredible. And one of the things that I think is amazing for these is you have the suite lounge and coastal kitchen. So you are on the same level of both of them, which is great. Now, even if you are on deck 18 and you're in one of these suites, you just have to go down one flight of stairs or the elevator 
very, very convenient. But if you are in a grand suite one bedroom, even more convenient because it's right here. So I think again with these, I would try and get, let's say 17, 18, 17, 20, 17, 16, or 17, 68, 17, 70, 17, 72. Those are gonna look like they're gonna have a bigger balcony. Um, these I think will have maybe an interesting balcony, but it's probably gonna look more over the ship. Um, and this one, 1702 and 1752, might have smaller balconies. We're not gonna see, we, we're not gonna really know until we get some pictures, but it appears like they're gonna have a smaller balcony, but I don't think it's gonna be that small. So I, I, again, I would still book this cabin in a heartbeat. Okay, next we're gonna be talking about the Aqua Theater Suites, and these are special to Oasis class ships and they are also on the wonders of the sea. So we're gonna talk about the Aqua Theater Suites two bedrooms. They're in two categories, the A1 and A2. So A1 is on deck um, eight, and then A2s are on deck nine and 10. So cabin information, the size information is the one on deck eight is 823 square feet plus a 770 72 square foot balcony. Deck nine is 739 square foot cabin plus a 695 square foot balcony. And then deck 10 is a 673 square foot cabin plus a 610 square foot balcony. So again, for these, I would say deck eight is definitely going to be your best choice if you are booking an aqua suite theater um, balcony uh, with two bedrooms. So this is the one on deck eight. There are two videos, you can definitely find them on YouTube. Um, so there are two of them here, this is eight, three, three, four, there are no pictures. Now that is a different category, so that is A1, so that may be a little bit more expensive. So if you are looking, um, let's say only A2 is available, there's four staterooms, you definitely wanna try and get on deck nine. Deck nine is going to be a little bit bigger, um, and here you have some videos, but then we also have some pictures here. So obviously, I mean, this is just incredible, it is in a absolutely amazing suite and it's about 100 square foot bigger than the one on deck 10 at the same price so you know just something to consider i don't think you should avoid the one on deck 10 if that is the only one available then absolutely book it you can always try and see if the one on deck 9 is available but i don't think you're going to be unhappy in the one on deck 10. I mean, this is an amazing balcony. This is the one on obviously on deck nine. Now let's take a look at deck 10 to take a look at the ones here and let's see if there's any pictures. I think there's no, no, there's just a video. So we just have some videos here, but you can kind of see, again, I think these are gonna be amazing, but just to kind of consider that the one on deck 10 is 673 square feet, whereas the one on deck nine is 739 square feet. So um, about let's say maybe 50 square feet or maybe 60 square feet is gonna be the difference. And then the balcony is 85 square feet smaller. So it's significant, but it's not a huge difference where I still think you could absolutely book the one on deck 10, but if you can book the one on deck nine. Next up, we're gonna to go to category A3, and this is the Aqua Theater Suite one bedroom. And there's six of them. They are on decks 11, 12, and 14. So um, just similar to what we talked about in the categories A1 and A2, these are going to be a little bit of a different size. However, they're not that big of a difference. Deck 11 is a 606 square foot um, cabin with a 626 square foot balcony. Deck 12 is 562 square foot cabin plus 589 square foot balcony. And then deck 14 is 604 square foot cabin plus a 631 square foot balcony. So of these, I would probably choose, personally, I would probably choose the deck, the one on deck 14, just because Adventure Ocean is on deck 14 and we like being on the same deck as Adventure Ocean, even though it'd be completely on the other side, but um, we would still like to be on the same deck as 
Adventure Ocean. Um, I think decks 11 and 14, they're going to be very, very similar. So here's 11. 12 is probably the least desirable. It is definitely a smaller room and a smaller balcony. So 12 is going to be the least desirable. However, again, just like I said with the other category, I don't think it's to avoid. It's not a bad stateroom. Um, you can always book it if that's, if let's say the one on deck 12, let's move up to deck 12. Um, let's say this one right here, 12, 3, 3, um, 4 is the only one available. Let's just, you know, book it and you want it. That's the stateroom you want. Book it and then you can just try and see if the 11 or 14 opens up and then, and then, but again, if it doesn't, I think you would be perfectly happy here. And then on deck 14, you would see here, there is a video right here. So I would probably choose one of the ones on deck 14. You can just kind of look at that video later on if you wanted to. Again, I like being on deck 14 because it's the same deck as Adventure Ocean and we do have um, a son who loves going to Adventure Ocean. And even though it just, it just avoids having to take the stairs or the elevator, even though it's literally on the other side of the ship. Next up, we're going to go down to the junior suites. So the junior suites are categories J3 and J4. And you'll see they are on decks six through 14. And we are gonna start with deck six and they are these dark purple here. And if you see this right here, these mean that it sleeps up to five. I think that maybe means it has a Pullman. I'm not 100% sure until we see a, you know, a, a picture of these rooms, but they do sleep up to at least five. The rest will sleep either three or four. The J3s, I think, sleep up to four, and the J4s sleep up to um, either two or three. So actually, yeah, there you have it. The J4s are doubles. So the J3s are quads, the J4s are doubles, and then some of these do have um, five plus. So just kind of keep that in mind right here. So there's eight on deck six. Deck six, I think, is a fantastic deck because for several reasons. You have the boardwalk. So you have the boardwalk right here. You come right out. You're right at the boardwalk. You're very close to the elevator. The boardwalk, you've got the boardwalk doghouse. You have Johnny Rockets, which does serve breakfast in the morning, and a lot of people don't know about that. A lot of things going on right here. But then you have this little staircase right down here to go down to the promenade, right? So if you've got the cafe promenade, you've got Sorrento's, you've got just everything, you've got Starbucks, very important to me. So you have all this and it's only, you can just take that like stairs, you can take the stairs either right here, which is, I, I love taking these stairs right here, um, or you can take these stairs right here, but very, very convenient. So I love deck six. Deck six and deck 14 are my favorite on the Elisa's class ships, so I would definitely want to choose one of these. Now we're going to go up to deck seven, very similar location, a little bit more. Obviously these are going to be on the hump right here. You can see, let's see, let, uh, let's see some pictures. So, oh, this one's got a lot of pictures. So we got a nice walk-in closet right here, and here are some pictures of the room. So quite a few pictures, beautiful bathroom. Obviously the ship just you know, started. Um, I think by the time I'm recording this, maybe it's been around for two months. Just an absolutely stunning ship. I mean, this is a beautiful junior suite. I love the color scheme that they've done. It's definitely more modern than past ships. And let's take a look at the balcony here. So yes, you can see that this is a hump um, balcony, so it's definitely extended. It is definitely larger than most. So this is 7640. So when you see those ones on the hump, they are going to be a good size. Um, I don't really prefer deck seven just because there's really nothing to do on there. Some people do prefer that because it makes a very quiet deck, really a personal preference. Deck eight, so you got a quite a few here. So these are the ones that are gonna be in the hump. However, the ones that aren't on the hump are they're gonna be the ones that have that five plus um, certification so they can they can sleep more than five people so definitely take a look at those if you are a family of five um the one thing i love about deck eight is that it is the same deck as central park so you can come right out here so the entrance to central park would be right out here or you could come out on this side and you'd have to walk all the way over here 
to you know go to park cafe so you have a lot of actions you know i do prefer deck six over deck eight but if there were no state rooms on deck six this would not be a bad choice as well because again you would not have the noise from from central park you would be completely separated but you would be able to enjoy it be very very close so really great being on deck eight deck nine going to be very similar so right here um you've got the state rooms here again on the hump Again, very quiet deck. There's nothing going on here. Deck 10, gonna be very similar. Now there's only eight on deck 10 and you have, let's see, you have two on the hump. Two, three, six and six, three, six are gonna be the ones on the hump with the larger balcony. Um, deck 11, again, you've got a couple on the hump. Um, two, th two, three, eight and two, four, two and two, four, four. And then six, three, six, six, three, eight and six, four, two and 644 are going to be larger balconies. So a lot of choices on deck 11 and definitely again, a quiet deck that doesn't have a lot of activity on it because it is pretty much just state rooms. Deck 12, same thing, pretty much the same state rooms that we talked about on deck um, 11 and then deck 14. So deck 14, again, if you do have kids, I do love deck 14 because it does the same deck as Adventure Ocean. And nothing is more convenient than just walking down the hall and dropping off your kid and then walking down the hall and picking them up back, back up later. Very, very convenient. Just not having to take an elevator or stairs, not having to worry about any of that. Um, and especially if you're like us, that picks them up at like the last possible second. Um, yes, it's just very convenient to be on the same deck. So here are some um, decks here. So now these, look a little bit larger, but I'm not sure why. Um, they don't seem to be handicapped, but I'm not sure if they are larger or not. We'll just kind of have to wait and see if we see pictures. But again, these look to be on the larger um, the larger balconies. So again, if I were to choose one of these, I would probably choose, um, I would probably choose one of these, um, even though they have the smaller balcony, just because it's closer to the elevator. So you just be really close to the elevator. I think that's more desirable than to be midship, but some people are different. Some people want a larger balcony. They don't really care to be close to the elevator. So again, I don't think you're gonna go wrong with any one of these. Okay, next up, we are now to the balconies and we're gonna talk about the family balcony. And this in is called the ultra spacious ocean view with balcony and it is category 1A. It is essentially a family balcony and there are not a lot of these on any of the ships. Some ships don't even have them, but I think they are fantastic, especially if you have a family of five. Now, um, on this ship, there's only five of them in the um, balcony staterooms. The four of them are regular and there is one that is handicapped. The one thing that is special about these staterooms, and um, you'll see, let's see if, uh, we you'll see right here there are bunk beds so these are the rooms here's a you can watch this video on your own but you'll see that there are bunk beds and then there's this basically it's the size of a junior suite now the most important thing to know about these if you have let's say a family of five and you decide to do this over two adjoining staterooms is that you are um only going to get one bathroom so for some families they want the two bathrooms even though you're going to have two smaller spaces rather than have one big room now for us with one child we would prefer this because we'd be fine we're not going to get two state rooms but this would be fine so you have the bunk beds right when you walk in you have the regular bathroom and the the room is basically the size of a junior suite and you have these bunk beds right here amazing amazing um stateroom i mean look at it it is just absolutely stunning so that is um the ultra spacious uh ocean view on the wonders of the seas and as you can see there's only five of them they're all toward the front of the ship one of them is um uh, is a handicapped accessible so essentially there's only four of them they're right now the elevator now they are i think they're they can be a great value but they can also be quite pricey so you might even want to you know check maybe even getting a junior suite um if you are a family of three or four you don't need the extra space because it might be the same price okay next up in the balcony is going to be the uh let's see it is the one eye and 
2i category. These are the boardwalk balconies. So these are on decks eight through 14, and we'll take a look at them, and we're gonna start with deck eight. Now these are the ones that are, they do have a balcony, but you're overlooking the interior of the ship. Now it is outdoors because it's the boardwalk um, you know, balcony. So you're going to overlook the boardwalk and a lot of it will be this, um, this slide. This is the ultimate abyss. Now here is um, some really great pictures that someone submitted and you can see some of the pictures and what the view is. Now we had one of these on deck 11 years ago on, I think it was the Allure. Now the Allure doesn't have the ultimate bis, so we had a clear view. I personally thought I was going to like it much more than I did. Um, now, again, if you were booking um, this cabin, and let's say you wanted to book this, you wanted a balcony, but you couldn't afford the ocean view. They, they are a little bit more. Um, I would not go on deck eight. And as you can see is this is just so close. You're out in the balcony. Now, some people might like that. You'd have a really great view of the um, dive show, especially if you were over here. Let's see if there's any pictures. No, there's just a video, but obviously you can see this one. This person said the best boardwalk balcony. They thought it was great because you're really close to the dive show. So it really is just personal preference. Personally, we didn't like that. We liked going down and watching the dive show, but we were on deck 11. I think we were on 11. Um, let's see, we were in 11329. That was the stateroom we were in on the Allure years ago. Um, and we just didn't really care for it, but to each his own, everybody's different. Now, if you were, maybe you wanna be, if you wanna be able to watch the dive show from your balcony, then 8329 or 8729 are going to be the ones you're gonna to wanna to pick. Um, once you get back here, you know, you're gonna be, you know, this is gonna be very, very close. And again, if you look at this, you're very, very close. When you get on your balcony, you're gonna be saying hi to people that are down below. Um, maybe that's something you wanna do. It just really is a personal preference. Now going up to deck nine, you're not gonna see, there's no pictures here. It's just up one deck, but very, very similar state rooms. Again, from deck 10, um, there's, no, there's no pictures, but you can see this video if you wanted to look on your own. Um, let's go down, to, go up to deck 11. So deck 11, there is some pictures for 11727. And let's see, so you can see this, the, the ultimate abyss really does block the view. We, we had a beautiful, clear view from our balcony when we were on the Allure years ago. Um, again, we still didn't really love it, but it was, um, it was it was definitely a clearer view. So uh, I don't really care for that, I personally. Um, some people might not mind, but again, just personal preference. Going up to deck 12, you do have some videos here. So here is a video of a room. Again, the rooms, the state rooms are absolutely stunning. So if you wanted to see that, you could. And then deck 14, you're gonna be high up. Now deck 14, they do have some, the handicapped accessibles right here. And then these, you can't see, but these are gonna be interior. We'll talk about that later. So again, I think with the boardwalk balcony, um, some people love them, some people don't. I'm in the don't category, but I don't hate them. I just prefer, I think I would prefer an ocean view with no balcony over a boardwalk balcony. And next we're gonna look at the Central Park balcony, which is categories 1J and 2J. And they are on decks 10 through 14. And these are the ones that are going to be overlooking the Central Park. So now on the Oasis class ships prior, the staterooms that were 229 and 629 had a double length balcony. We don't have reports yet that these are double length, so they may or may not be double length. Look at the Oasis, the Allure, there's definitely a lot of pictures on those. Um, Symphony, Harmony, all of those, those balconies basically have double length. However, there's no reports yet that these are. 
So let's take a look. This one has a video, but this will give you a good video of the Central Park balcony tour. Now, again, being in this stateroom here, you would be just up two decks from the eighth deck, which is the actual Central Park. So I would probably not choose deck 10. Um, I would probably choose deck 14, again, because it's on the same deck as Adventure Ocean, but um, I would at least go up to 11 or 12 before choosing 10. Um, so here you can see some pictures here. Let's see if we can see some pictures of the um, of the balcony. So here's a great picture of the balcony right here. Beautiful stateroom. Um, I mean, absolutely beautiful. I love the Oasis class ships. The Oasis class ships are some of my favorite. Just absolutely stunning. And I think the deck 11 is definitely high enough where you would not feel like you're you know, waving to everybody. And we'll talk about these state rooms right here. So these are state rooms that are Central Park or Promenade view, but they're Central Park view. So I think we'll talk about those in a little bit. So really great pictures of the Central Park on deck 11. And then deck 12, again, you'll see here, um, you'll see those balconies right here. Again, I think it's just a matter of, I would try and choose one close to an elevator um, being, you know, if you want to be close to the park cafe over on this side, I think Starbucks is on this side too, on the promenade. So if you are one like me that goes to Starbucks in the morning or needs to get coffee, try to be on this side of the elevator, um, rather than this side. And then deck 14, same thing. Again, I would probably try to be on this side just because we would be close to Adventure Ocean if we were going to be choosing that. So really just depends, but I would say if you can, if you have the option, try and book 229 or 629. I don't know 100% those are going to be double sized balconies, but my guess is probably they are, but I, I don't know if I'd bet money on it. Okay, next up we're going to be talking about all the balcony ocean view. Okay, next up we're going to be talking about all the ocean view balconies. So these are categories 1C, 2C, 1D, 2D, CB, 3D, and 4D. So 1C and 2C are the spacious balconies. Those are the ones that are going to have larger balconies. Typically they are larger balconies, not larger staterooms. Sometimes it may mean an extra, a larger stateroom, but typically these are balconies that are on the hump. And then the connecting, now there are some balconies that are connecting that aren't CB, but then there are some that are dedicated, you know, categorized as CB. So I'm gonna go over all of these um, together, but I'm gonna go deck by deck. So we're gonna start with deck six, and deck six is probably my second favorite deck. If we didn't have a child in Adventure Ocean, this would probably be my favorite deck. So you can see here. So here on the purple is the 3D and 4D, and then you have 1D, 2D. So the 1D, 2D are going to be a better location. If you are in 6328 or 6728, you have a long walk all the time because you can't just walk out here, you gotta walk all the way. Let's say you wanna go to the dive show, you gotta go walk all the way around, okay? So you're gonna be walking all the time. So again, I would, if you're trying to book 3D, 4D, try and get on this side. It might be worth it. If none of these, if the only staterooms are on this side, then try and get you know 1D, 2D. But again, um, so this one would be ideal, 62, 70, really close to the elevator, really close to the boardwalk. Again, I talked about how this one goes straight down to the promenade. I love deck six because you have the promenade right here. Now let's go a little forward. You have 1D, 2D right in the middle. And then obviously these pink ones, 1C, 2C, are the ones with the larger balconies. And these are the ones on the hump, which is why they are more going to be probably a little bit more expensive. And again, 1D, 2D, again, these are close to the elevators and these are more forward. So really you can see these are all about location. The category the categories are all about location. Again, between 3D and 4D, if you are in 6160 and 6130, that is a big difference, really big difference. These are really close to the elevator, gonna be the same price. So definitely try and always get on the Oasis class ships, you know, try and get close to an elevator, especially 
if you are in the forward or aft part of the ship. So that is deck six. Now we're gonna go to deck seven and it's gonna be very, very similar. Um, you have here, now these are going to be ocean view. So, uh, you know, these are 3D, 4D, these are the connecting, and then the 1D, 2D are going to be more midship. Um, obviously 1C, 2C are on the hump, which are always tend to be more midship. And again, these staterooms, these are the one I would say probably 7,300, 7,700 and back. Those are the ones I would try and avoid just because you're just always going to be having a long walk. Now, maybe that's what you want because you're gonna be eating a lot on a ship, but personally, it's just the oasis, you don't really realize how big these oasis class ships are until you're on them. Um, so again, same thing with deck eight. Deck eight, again, is the same as Central Park. Very convenient, but again, if you're close to the elevator, you'd be right here. So 8270, 8670, these are gonna be the best value. Very, very close to the elevator, but they're in that 3D, 4D category. Um, and then you have some on the hump, which the 1C, 2C. And then these right here are gonna be, again, you know, really, really far. So you wanna try and get the 80, you know, 8160, 8560. Deck nine, same thing, gonna be close to the elevator trying to get those ones close to here. Um, and as well as, let's see, 9270, 9670. Again, these you're gonna be paying money for, so you just wanna try, if you're gonna be getting one C, two C, just try and get one with the bigger balcony because you're gonna be paying for it. Deck 10, these are all gonna be very similar, same type of thing, um, trying to stay towards the front part of this as close to the part, close to the elevator as possible. Same thing at the front of the ship. Deck 11, now deck 11 is um, not as much because these are the ultra spacious. So you have them, they're starting right over here. So these aren't as bad, but I would again, 11, you know, 156, 11, 560 ideal. Um, and then in the back of the ship, again, starting with, you know, trying not to get too far back. Like I would say 11, 300, 11, 700. 12, same thing goes, you know, trying not to stay too far back. And as far as the front of the ship, the same thing. And then deck 14. Now deck 14, if you do have kids and you're trying to be on deck 14 and you are booking 3D, 4D, you may wanna try and get it in the front of the ship. Um, 14, 160 would be ideal or 14, 560 because literally you could walk out of your room and then just come out. Now we were in this area right here on the symphony when our son was three and it was fantastic. Like we literally just walked out. He was the first time he'd ever used a kids club and we weren't sure and it was very convenient. So if we had to pick him up, we were right there. So it was very convenient. So um, I would say I would try to be in the front of the ship if you are planning on using a Deventure Ocean um, rather than the back of the ship if you can. Even if you're at the back, you know, the elevator, I think being in the front of the ship close to the Adventure Ocean is gonna be more convenient, um, especially if you have little, little ones. Okay, now we're moving to the Ocean View staterooms and we're gonna start with the ultra spacious Ocean View, which is category 1K, which is the family Ocean View staterooms. They sleep up to six and there's eight of them and they are all on deck 11. So um, there are two all the way front of the ship. Now there are no pictures for these yet on the Wonders of the Seas. However, if you go back to any of the other Oasis class ships, there are some pictures of some of these staterooms. From my memory, the best ones in this category are going to be the 11124 and the 11524. On the other ships, these are the ones that are a little bit wider and they also have a walk-in closet. I don't know if that's the case with the Wonders of the Seas, but given they are in the same location, I would say they do. Um, so I would say those are the best. I would then go, if those two aren't available, I would go for one of these two, and then these two personally would be my last choice, though I still think they are an amazing stateroom. I love the ultra spacious category on the Royal Caribbean ships. So again, the best in this category are going to be 11-124 and 11-524, but I think you can't go wrong with any of these. Next up in the outside category is going to be the Central Park 
um, views. Next up in the outside category is going to be the Central Park view, and they are on deck nine. And as you can see, there's 70 of them. And these staterooms on average are about 199 square feet. So while they don't have a balcony, they are a bit larger. They are category 2S, and I did show these a little bit a while ago on the Central Park, and you can see they're all this light pink. There are some videos, there's no pictures, but there are some YouTube videos, and you can find those on YouTube but they are going to basically have a window overlooking Central Park. Now you're gonna be one flight up from Central Park, so keep that in mind. I think these are a great value as far as ocean view, uh, or as far as an outside view. You would have an, an outside view, you wouldn't have an ocean view, but this is kind of a lot of times the same price as an interior um, stateroom, but you do have a view, and you have an outside view, you're gonna be getting natural sunlight, during the day and then again you are going to get a little bit more room so we're a family of three that don't really use a balcony we have the balcony we like the balcony but because our little one we i don't really feel comfortable going out there very often so you know we would get like 15 extra square feet in this stateroom not a bad idea so just something to consider especially if budget is a consideration again with these i would try to stay on either end of them if you could because you're going to be near the elevator personally i would try to be toward the front elevators 9177 9577 for several reasons one I can go down the stairs and i'll be right at park you know park cafe i can go down the stairs to deck six or deck five and go to starbucks and then deck 14 i would be close to adventure ocean so a couple things to be on this side for my family however maybe you want to be close to the but i think either one you want to be close to the elevator but again again in the middle is not a bad thing you're going to be midship you're going to be close to everything because you are midship so i think these are an excellent value especially if you're on a budget Next up in the ocean view, outside view staterooms are the ocean view, which are 3N, 4N, 1N, and 2N, and these sleep up to five. There are 147 staterooms. There's not that many. Now, the interesting thing here is you'll see that the 1N, 2N, which means it's usually a more expensive category, are on deck three, whereas the rest are on deck seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. And the reason why is this, all of these are going to be more forward ship. We'll take a look at these, and these are all midship. So if you are one that has an issue with, you're concerned about getting seasick, um, then definitely maybe look at this category, uh, the one and two in on deck three. We'll take a look at that one first. So deck three, you'll see it's very midship right here. It is between the um, two elevator banks. So you're very, very central. You're gonna be lower on the ship. You're gonna have less movement. And then you'll also see you are right next to the main dining room. So those are really great staterooms. Again, um, I think if I were booking an outside stateroom, I would probably book this category. Now going down up to deck seven. So they're all going to be forward of the ship. So you'll see right here, they're all going to be very forward. Now let's see if we see down here if we there's any information. So um, I don't see any information about, there was a category 2.0, was SO, was a studio, but I don't see categories, yeah, cabin, we don't have those anymore. So it doesn't seem that there's any interesting things about size, but that could change as more information comes about the ships. These in the front part of the ship tend to be shaped a little bit different. The windows tend to be, the walls tend to be a little bit on an angle, which can give you more room or it can give you less room. Let's look at deck eight. Deck eight, the same thing. Um, you know, again, I think it's just a matter of, um, you're gonna see some of these might have um, some extra room. Deck nine. Um, I would try and get the ones on the front. I would try and avoid the ones on the side personally, but um, you'll see here deck 10, um, not much information here, deck 11. I think if you're booking any of these, it's probably going to be 
um, what do you want to be close to, right? So deck, it's deck seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. I would probably, if I were booking one of these, I would get on deck eight, just because that would give me the same deck as Central Park. It would give me the same deck as something. But again, if I were booking Ocean View, I would probably try on to get on deck three if it wasn't that much more expensive, because I think it's just going to be a better, more central location, even though it's lower on the ship. And we are finally to the interior staterooms and we are looking at the family interior, which is also the ultra spacious interior. These are category 1R. They sleep up to six. There's only four of them and they are all on deck 11. So on the wonder of the seas, all the ultra spacious family staterooms are on deck 11 and they're all in the same area. So let's go and take a look. They're all in the front of the ship and there's not much of a difference. Obviously they're, you know, 137, 139, 147, 149. I would choose 11, 149 just because it's going to be the closest to the elevator. I'm pretty sure they all look almost exactly alike. But again, this one's just going to be just a slightly better location because it's going to be close to the elevator, but you know, not by much. But as you can see, all the ultra spacious are on deck 11 in the forward part of the ship. So, um, and then it's very similar to Oasis, um, the Oasis class. Now, some of the other ones do have some on deck seven, but I think it's only two. Otherwise, they are, are mostly on deck 11. So, um, not much to say about this category. I think they're great value. If you have a family of five, this is definitely a, a category to consider. Next up is going to be the Promenade View Interior. This is category 2T. They are all on deck seven and there's 26 of them and they can sleep up to five. And the interesting thing here is they're either gonna be a promenade view or a boardwalk view. So you see these eight right here. These are, they're considered promenade view, but they're actually going to be overlooking the boardwalk. Now you're gonna be one flight up from the boardwalk. You're pretty much going to be watching the people coming down the slide. But I mean, I think it's a nice view, could be very interesting. Um, I would probably prefer though being on the promenade, even though this is going to give you an outside like natural sunlight, this will not, this would be an interior view, but I think this is more central central part of the ship. So I think of the two, I would probably choose these. You can see here, um, I would probably choose 7185 or 7187 because it's going to be closer to the forward elevator. But I think any one of these could be great. Again, and if you have, um, let's say you need to get two staterooms, this is an option as well because these are interior where these have a, a window so you could save a little bit of money. Let's say you, you know, you have five you know, you are a family of five, you're gonna get two rooms. These are a really great option where you could save a little bit of money and only have a view in one of the state rooms. So again, um, I think, not that I think that these are bad, I just think that the ones um, here are gonna be better just because they're more centrally located. And finally, we are going to the last category, which is category, and finally, we're gonna finish up with the interior staterooms. There are 523 of them. They sleep up to four categories, 4U, 1V, 2V, 3V, 4V, and CI. They are in decks three and then decks six through 14. So important side information. Aft inside cabins on deck seven to 14 are 149 square feet. And then the ones in the front, which are, um, there's some numbers here you can take a look, are 100, also 149 square feet. Uh, there are some on deck 11 that are 140 square feet. Um, so just something to consider. This is something that is consistent with all of the Oasis class ships. So if you are a couple, not going to be a problem. But if you are a family of four, then you probably don't want to book this. Um, but let's start with deck three. So let's start with deck three with the interior staterooms on deck three. Now there's not that many of them. There's only three of them, very centrally located, close to the elevator. I think these are great. You're, you Obviously, if you are prone to seasickness, these are probably the best staterooms for you. They're the lowest and they're midship. So really great um, option if you are concerned about getting seasick. Now let's start with these. Now you'll see here, the four of you are the ones that have the virtual balcony. 
personally never had a virtual balcony, but I think they're very cool. I think it's very cool if you have little ones. Again, front um, part of the ship is really great. These are pretty good because they're, they're not too far forward. You're close to the fitness center, you're close to the Vitality Cafe. I do like being on deck six and you're just one deck up from the um, promenade. So here are some interior as well, some handicapped staterooms. So you have a lot of stuff here on deck six as well. Um, so a lot of deck six, so I think deck six is a really great option for an interior stateroom. I think especially these right here, the 4U and the 3V, 4V are really great options. You've right next to the Vitality Cafe, Real, I think these are just really great staterooms. I would probably choose the ones up here over the ones back here. Um, deck seven, um, deck seven, you're gonna have a lot more choices here. So obviously, again, you're gonna try and stay to the ones closer to the elevator and not so far forward. That's just gonna be, this, this door is going to be over on this side. So if you are in 7501, you're gonna be walking a lot. So. And these are the ones, 71.5, I think these are the ones that are going to be 100 and 71.10 and 75. You can take a look at those numbers. Those are the ones that are going to be 149 square feet, so they're going to be smaller. They probably sleep only up to two, but that's something to consider. And then the ones on the aft, these aft on the aft are also 149 square feet. So I would personally, great location, I would personally avoid them. Um, and this is going to be the same on every deck. There's only four here. So in the front, I would try and get to these right here. Now, 8448, 8468, 8470, these are gonna be great because you're right next to the elevator. You're right next to Central Park. So these are really great, great staterooms for an interior because you're gonna have a great location, fantastic. These, smaller, all the way to the front, not so much. Let's look at deck nine, same thing, 9448. Now you're not on the same deck as anything, but you could just walk down one flight of stairs. These, not so much. Deck 10, um, so here uh, 1040, um, 10471 is gonna be a great stateroom right next to the elevator. Again, same thing goes, not so much. Deck 11, um, you got you know some things here. This one is an interior, it looks to be a little bit bigger. Um, 11, 4, 51, great location. Again, elevator, it kind of says the same thing. And I'm just kind of avoiding the ones in the back. These are all 149 square feet. You can look, they all have them on the other decks too, but these are all gonna be smaller. So those will be ones that I personally, I personally would avoid because they're just gonna be smaller. There's deck 12. Let's go up to deck 12 here. Now there are some in the middle. You'll see some hidden in the middle. So these are great, but I would still try and get close to the elevator. Now deck 12, there's not so much close to the elevator. So maybe this one right here, I think these are gonna be the best on deck 12. And then deck 14. So I think if I was interior, I would probably try to get on deck 16 over here. However, deck 14 is also a great location. You have one four, one seven five, which is a in, uh, virtual interior, really close to the kids club. So if you are a family that just needs one balcony, I mean, one interior stateroom, really great location, very central, close to the elevator, close to the uh, kids club. Again, these I would personally try to avoid, but that's all of the interior staterooms. Again, I think with these, trying just getting close to an elevator midship is going to be your best bet for an interior stateroom. And there you have it. Those are my recommendations for the best and worst staterooms on the Wonder of the Seas. So again, this is a brand new ship as I'm recording this, but if any of you get on the ship and have good stateroom, poor stateroom, anything, definitely leave a comment below. Let us know what your stateroom was. Was it good? Was it bad? You know, what would you do differently? Did I get anything wrong? Definitely comments because it does help other people as they're watching this. Um, I do appreciate that. Even if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, definitely post in the comments. I don't mind. Um, again, a lot of this is subjective. A lot of this is my opinion and what I would do, but a lot of people, you know, may feel differently. So with that, if you like this video, click like, click and subscribe subscribe. That way you get a notification every time I post a new video. Bye everyone.